So you guys know we've been following this minor strike that has been going on now, I think, over four months. Well, yesterday they went hundreds of miners and protested outside of BlackRock in Manhattan um, because that is the largest investor in Warrior Met Coal. That's, of course, the company that they all work for, where they've been getting the same wages now for years and years, took a huge pay cut and a bankruptcy. Um, we have a great journalist on who can explain everything that's going on there and also was at that protest yesterday and got some great video. Kim Kelly joins us, uh, independent journalist. I've found your work, Kim, at The Real News, also at a More Perfect Union. I think that's who you were working for at the protest yesterday. Teen Vogue, also great work there. And, and, and has a book coming out out called Fight Like Hell, The Untold History of American Labor. Great to see you, Kim. Good to see you, Kim. Thank you so much for having me and for paying attention to the story. As we know, it's been kind of an uphill battle. Well, I, wanna, I do want to get to that because I, I actually think that is an important part of the story. But just for people who haven't been following the strike, what are the grievances? How long has it been going on? And what was it like on the ground there yesterday on site of BlackRock? Right, so over 1,100 coal miners at Warrior Met Coal in Brookwood, Alabama, which is kind of a rural area out in Tuscaloosa County, they've been on strike since April 1st. It's an unfair labor practices strike, which means that essentially negotiations uh, for their new contract between the company and the union broke down, and they weren't offered anything that was really worth taking, from what I'm told. So they decided, all right, we got to do this. We got to hit the bricks. It's actually the largest strike in 40 years in Alabama. And they've been out there on the picket lines every day, 24-7. It's been, it's taken a huge amount of effort to sustain the strike, but, you know, they've been putting in the hours. And yesterday, I think about 400 of folks from Alabama, as well as West Virginia and Pennsylvania and Kentucky, busloads of miners, members of the UMWA, United Mine Workers of America, they came into Manhattan and joined a bunch of local supporters from a number of other unions, as well as like labor leaders and just locals who are down to support the cause. And it was it was really beautiful. There was hundreds and hundreds of people in camo picketing in front of Black Rock. The images were great. The speeches were great. Susan Sarandon showed up. It was, it was a pretty <laughs> great experience. And there were a lot of media people out there. So I'm really hoping that their store is finally going to get out there. We have a little bit of video from the ground yesterday, Kim. Let's take a listen to that. We'll get your reaction on the other side. But I'll tell you this. No matter how this strike goes on. No matter how many scabs try to assault you, no matter how many times they escalate this issue, I'll tell you this, young workers, young workers, 25-year-old workers, 30-year-old workers, South Dakotans, Californians, workers all over the world are going to stand with you and will support you and there's nothing BlackRock or any other rich asshole can do about it. What was the feeling there on the ground, Kim? I mean, is there a feeling of hope there um, in order to be victorious? Yeah, people were really excited to be in New York City. For most of these folks, it's the first time they've been there. I actually took about a dozen of them out on the town the night before. Oh, and nice. Both sightseeing. <laughs> it's very wholesome, you know, more or less. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> people are excited. I think they're very excited to see media out there. They're excited to see labor leaders from around the country out there. I'm sure it felt different to them because, you know, the UMWA, they've been having weekly rallies on Wednesdays at Tannehill State Park down near Brookwood. And, you know, that's been a big part of sustaining the strike, too. But it's a lot different going from kind of you know, your hometown area to Manhattan, New York City, surrounded by skyscrapers mm -hmm. in front of Black Rock. Like people people were pumped. That's, That's amazing. Great. Yeah, and um, you got phenomenal video like we just saw there. I also thought there was a video that really caught my eye where you were talking to two women who are wives of uh, minors down in Alabama who were just talking about what they were doing to try to sustain families during this long strike because, I mean, this is what people really need to understand. It's easy to sit here and be like, yeah, solidarity, this is great and good for you for fighting the man. But the reality is this imposes very difficult financial circumstances on the workers who are holding out for a better deal for themselves and their families and future workers to come after them. Let's take a look at what those two women had to say. On the weeks that we're not getting our strike paid, we're passing out the food pantry bags. On the weeks that we don't pass out the food pantry bags at the rally, then you can come to the union hall on Thursday from 10 to 1. How does it feel to be up here in New York supporting the miners? Hey, it, it feels great. 
spot. And what do you want people watching this to know about the struggle? It's real. It's very real. We're going to be here though. I'm sorry, we're not giving out. We will be here till the end, till we win this. So talk him a little bit about what families are going through right now. Right. So there's you know, 1,100 people, 1,100 workers on strike. So that's 1,100 families. And that's a lot of kids. I think about 80% of the works involved are parents. So that's the entire community. That's several communities, really, because it stretches out around Tuscaloosa County and Jefferson County, Walker County. And, you know, they, they do receive a strike fund check from the union every two weeks for about $650. And that's very important, but that only goes so far if you have a house payment and a car payment and kids and bills and medical issues because these are coal miners who put their bodies through hell to get their job done. You know, the auxiliary that, you know, those two women, Amy and Stephanie, and tons of other spouses and retired miners and family members are part of has been a huge factor in their ability to keep going. You know, they collect and distribute free groceries. They, you know, they make food for the rallies. They're kind of the biggest cheerleaders and manageable just to keep the energy up because it is hard. Their people are tired. People are scared. People want to, they want their jobs back, but they want to make sure they're going in with a fair deal. Yeah. And Kim, I mean, what does the future look like on the strike, on the success, and what are the terms um, that need to be come to? You know, they're not really asking for very much is the thing. And that's the thing that I think kind of fuels so much of the motivation here, because they're not asking for a million dollars an hour or anything out of the ordinary. What they're trying to do is get back to what they already had in their previous contract before Warrior Met came in, before Warrior Met slashed their pay and took away their overtime and took away vacation days and messed with their health care. They want to get back to what they had before they can even think about getting better. And of course, they should be getting better because we should be seeing that progress. Any ethical company would come to the table and offer that. But this is not an ethical company, as we've mm. seen from the vehicular attacks and the police presence and all of the hostilities that have been directed at these workers. So the motto for the strike has been one day longer, one day stronger. We'll be out here one day longer than they can stand. And they're dug in. Like, they're ready to be out here as long as they need to. Like, some of the women told me, you know, we're getting ready for a December toy drive for the kids if we need to. Uh So they're not going anywhere, but it's going to be tough. I think the other piece of this, Kim, is is the media part. And, you know, one of the reasons, this story is important for a lot of reasons. But one of them is if you are like me and I think like you and you believe in a multiracial working class politics— Here you have the majority of the workforce at Warrior Met is black. You have white miners coming in from West Virginia to support them. You also have white families who are impacted by by the strike in these conditions as well. So you actually have a true multiracial working class standing in solidarity, fighting corporate power against all odds. An incredible story, historic story, as you put it. First time in 40 years you've had a strike of this size in Alabama, which is a so-called right-to-work state, and yet— As of at least last week, there was a study done, not one segment, not one word from any of the three cable news networks about this fascinating, compelling, historic story. Why do you think that that is? It is, I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been covering this since the beginning and I've been so frustrated as a media person trying to get editors to green light pieces and trying to get these guys the attention they need. And there are a lot of factors involved. I think the fact that coal mining has, it's not the most popular uh, profession anymore. You know, we're moving towards green energy. It's environmentally destructive. I understand that it would, it's not necessarily the hottest topic that everyone wants to get behind. It's complicated. But, and I I think the fact that this is a group of rural working class, Alabama coal miners, they're not the traditional union demographic when it comes down to politics is a more conservative group. So maybe that chips away at some of the available sympathy. And of course, it, I mean, the Democrats don't want to talk about them or support them because they work with coal and the Republicans don't want to talk about them because they're union, because the Republicans don't care about the working class. So they're kind of at a rock and a hard place. There's no politicians coming by to wave. There's no, you know, the New York Times isn't there on the ground because I was just in Alabama somewhere. Mm. Like it's, it's been driving me nuts because I'm from like a rural, uh, like blue collar background. And like these folks remind me of my family. And so I just wish, you know, that I wish more people were paying attention. But I am hoping 
that them coming to New York and coming to the belly of the beast, as it were, and being surrounded by media and being in this backdrop will really kind of shake people and be like, hey, this is a big deal. These people deserve our attention. They deserve a fair deal. You know, this is this is special and we need to be supporting it. Yeah. Well, listen, if people want to follow what's going on, there is no better source um, than you. You cover this story from the beginning on the ground in Alabama, now up in New York. Um, Tell people where to find you and your work, Kim. Uh, I'm terminally online, so I'm very much on Twitter. <laughs> at Kim, my old college re- uh, DJ name. Um, I have a Patreon. I work for, I'm independent, so I work for a number of different places. I was covering that for More Perfect Union yesterday. Yeah, I also write for Teen Vogue. I'm working on stuff for a lot of different places. But Twitter's the best way to find me. And also a lot of the uh, the wives have become active on Twitter and TikTok. And that's something that. I like follow. It's really cute. They're the best. I love them. <laughs> and um and following the official UMWA accounts, it's it's easy to find this stuff if you if you're looking for it, but you just have to look a little harder because I don't know the powers that be aren't as interested in in making noise. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, go follow at Grim Kim on Twitter, and um, you know if you want to see real stories of what's actually going on for people that the mainstream news is not showing you whatsoever. Kim, yeah. thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for watching. You can become a premium subscriber today. We really appreciate all of your patience with our technical difficulties. It's not going to happen again. You know why? Because with your support, we just got a brand new Yay. awesome computer, which has 10 times the computing power of the previous one, which I'm told will help processing time, which will mean even more awesome content for all of you. It's funny. So it's actually funny that yeah. the computer arrived. Crashed. Like, yeah, literally the computer the came day the next day. After yeah. the, co- the old computer crashes right. and the new one shows up the very next day. So also, it was you guys done, will love this. We couldn't get the damn computer for a month and a half because of the semiconductor shortage. So there you go. Real life coming home to roost here. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend. We will see you back here next week. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.